At the end of this video, you'll be able to create a hyperlink widget. So if I were to hover it, you could see that the link has been highlighted to be in blue. And then you could see there's a click cursor as such. And then if you were to click on it, you'll be redirected to this channel and make sure you subscribe and like this video. So let's get started. So in order for us to create the hyperlink widget, we will need to create this sentence over here. So what I'm using currently is the selectable text dot reach. So what selectable text allows us is to select it. And then at the same time, we are going to use the reach constructor that allows us to have this styling of this sentence. What do I mean by styling is that if I have a word that requires an underline, then I will have to use this text span widget. So for this text span widget, we will need a list of text span widgets. And this allows us to style our different text accordingly. So we will have the first part of the statement to be a normal text. And then for our link over here, we will have the text style underline. And then lastly, our exclamation mark will be a normal text text. Now in order for us to make this interactive, meaning that if you were to hover over it and it will transform this mouse cursor into a click cursor, what we can do is we can make use of this property that is called mouse cursor. And then this allows us to change our mouse cursor to a different mouse cursor. So it requires the system mouse cursors and then we are going to make use of the click mouse cursor. And once you save this, you could see that our mouse cursor has transformed from a selectable text cursor to a click cursor when we hover over the link. Now the next thing is, once we hover over this link, we want to change the color of the word link and their underlying color. So how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to make use of a simple set state inside our stateful widget. So first, we are going to create a variable that is called underscore hover, and then we're going to set it to false. And then inside our text span, we will have this property or parameter that is called on enter. So what this on enter means is that when we enter a specific text span, then this callback will get activated. So for this, we are going to make use of the set state since we have a stateful widget and we're going to set the state of hover into true. Now, since there is on enter, that means there is on exit. And then we are going to do something very similar. So we can copy and paste this over here. And once we exit out of the text span, then we will set the hover state into false. Now the next thing is we want to change the color according to the hover state. So inside our text style of our link, we are going to use the color parameter. And if it's hovered, then we will change the color from black to blue. Otherwise, we will just pass in a null. So now let's save this. So what null does when we pass in into the color parameter is to set its default color, which is black. And now if you were to hover over the link, you could see that the current color is blue. And then if we were to exit or exit the space of the text span, it will just be the default color, which is black. Great. So now this is working. Now the user will expect if we were to click on a link, then we will open up another tab inside our web browser. So how are we going to open up a tab when we click on the link? So there is this thing called the recognizer. So what a gesture recognizer is basically an object that receives events when we interact with the text span. So there's a lot of things that we can do with the text span. So inside the documentation, there is this long press gesture recognizer, and then we can just override its long press to our own method. 
or function. So what we are going to do is we are going to create our gesture recognizer but a very specific one for this tutorial. So I'm going to show you the now safe way where I'm going to use the late keyword. Then we will have the final and then we're going to add in our recognizer and then we're going to create this thing called the tap gesture recognizer. So for this tap gesture recognizer, basically from the word itself, it recognizes any taps on the text span. So one of its property, it's called on tap. So the on tap is a simple function that the tap gesture recognizer has. So then we are going to create a function that is also called on tap. So let's create a private function that's called on tap. And then we will just set this on tap into the function on tap that we have created earlier. If you are wondering what the lead keyword does is, it's actually the same thing as this. And this is when it is non-null safe, where the initial value of the variable will be nulled and then inside the init state. So you have this variable that's assigned to the instance of the tab gesture recognizer and also its property to be changed as well. So with the late keyword, it helps us to make all of this init state and creating the instance while setting the property to its own value in one line. So a good summary is that sometimes the fields in a class should be non-nullable but can't be assigned the value right away. For a class like that, use the late keyword. This tells that you aren't going to assign the value right away but you are going to assign it a value later. And you also make sure that it's also assigned to a value before it's accessed. So now with that, we will just pass in the recognizer into our recognizer parameter over here. And lastly, we want to add in some functions inside our on tab. So what we can do is we can launch a new tab right after we click on it. We can make use of the URL launcher with this specific version number. And then we can just type in and then we can just type in launch and then pass in the URL string for you to subscribe to. And now if you were to save this, let's see if it works. All right, so if you were to click on this link, you could see that it actually opens a new tab for us, which is our YouTube channel, Learn Flutter Code. Great. So one thing that I want to show you guys is the mouse cursor over here. So other than the click, you can actually make use of the different mouse cursors. So there are tons that they have added for us. So for example, there is grab, there is help, there's move, and all of this resize and weight. So for example, if we were to put in weight and save this, once we hover over this, you could see that our mouse cursor has been transformed into this weight mouse cursor, which is great. So now you can specify the different mouse cursor for your different text over here. So one bug is that if we were to use the selectable text.reach, then it will actually default to its own mouse cursor. So I've already created an issue where this interaction, as you can see over here, it's uh, pretty buggy and so this is not consistent to the user experience because we still expect a specific mouse cursor interaction if you were to override it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down if you have any widgets that you want to make use inside your Flutter web project. So do join the Discord group. The link is in the description. So stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.